Hello, welcome to the new video from City Ink Express. Today we're going to be fitting the continuous ink system uh, to the HP PhotoSmart B110A. Uh, so the fit method is the same for all B110 printers. So at the moment I've got the uh, printer powered off and the print head is in the ink cartridge change position. Uh, so you need, do need to power the printer, head, printer off because we need to be able to remove this. And if the printer is powered on, it gets locked into position. So we need to remove the print head first. So I'm going to put the arm in the up position and gently pull it out towards me like so. So we need to install some silicon seals. So within your accessory pack, there are some silicon seals which look like this. Uh, and they will get placed one around each one of the nozzles on the print head. So the purpose of these seals is to stop air getting in. Uh, and then stop any excess ink getting out when it's uh, not supposed to. So just gently press them down all around the metal nozzle making sure uh, that the seal isn't overlapping uh, or riding over the top of the metal nozzle. So once you've put them into place you can pop the print head back into the printer uh, leave the arm in the up position for now because we're, we're ready to uh, start installing the continuous ink system. So before you install the continuous ink system, you need to check the inclines. If you have more than uh, about four inches of air in your inclines, you need to prime it and remove it. If you don't prime the system uh, before it goes in, uh, you will end up with air in the back compartment of your cartridge which will cause problems. So we do have uh, a separate video for filling and priming. It should be on the instructions that are provided. Uh, if not, just please contact us or look at our support section on the website. Uh, right, so make sure the roller's in the downwards position before you do this because we don't want ink to backtrack when I take these caps off. That's quite important. So just take the caps off. Please keep your caps uh, because if you've ever got to prime the system again in the future you will need them and it's not something we generally keep as spares. So please keep all the parts that come in the box with the system. So just pop them in as, <coughs> as a normal set of cartridge cartridges, clicking them into place uh, and then lock the, uh, the arm down in the downwards position. So we need to fix the grey arm. Before you fix the grey arm just check that there's no twists uh, or kinks. So let them, there, there's, that's a no good situation where there's clearly a twist uh, and that's an okay situation where it's just a straight uh, uniform shape. So you need to remove the green backing tape off the back off the clip which I've already done uh, and then we're going to affix it, let's just adjust the camera slightly we're going to affix it over here in this position here so the, the, the adhesive sticker gets, the second sticker gets up to the edge uh, and then you're just going to sit it in fractionally which I will show, show you, I'll zoom in so where we've actually attached it, the second sticker is up to this edge and I'm probably in just a couple of mil in this area here also, further down the ink line, you have a, a black clip here. Uh, you need to remove the green backing tape from the back of the clip. And, just, and then you can affix that one into position. So we're going to affix that one over there. And again, we've got just a nice straight line going across here. So before we can actually power the printer on, we need to check the ink line routing is correct. So you need to manually slide it all the way over to the right-hand side. And you'll notice that this bottom ink line here uh, is a little bit tight, and it should be. Uh, and then manually slide it all the way over to the right hand, the left-hand side, and just repeat that process a couple of times. Now it should be able to reach both sides comfortably and that should be a little bit tight. So if you need to adjust the ink lines you can do it by feeding this top ink line through the clip on the end here. So pushing it or pulling it will make the, ink, like the bottom ink line smaller or longer. So it should be no slack, no twisting uh, and it shouldn't be snagging at all. So we're now going to power the printer on but before you power the printer on what you must always do is you must always put the roller in the up position uh, and remove the small caps because the printer is going to want to start doing a head clean and purging cycle and we need it to be able to uh, pull ink uh, from the reservoir. So I'll come back to the SIS system in a minute. I'm just going to spin it round uh, and leave it there a second just while I power the printer on. <coughs> right, 
parts that I've powered the printer on. Uh, at the moment, this printer is not connected to uh, a PC, so for printing, I'm just going to pop something underneath the scanner, uh, underneath the scanner lid, uh, and that will be used uh, for our copying. So I'm just waiting for the uh, printer to initialise. It's going to take a minute. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bypass the uh, lid sensor and trick it into thinking that the lid is closed for now. So you won't have to do that. Right, so what it's saying is the uh, it's giving me an error code. So you'll notice that this system uh, did come with chips, but it's giving me an error. The above ink cartridge appears to be missing or damaged and it's indicated the black cartridge. So the first thing to do, if you get that message, which can happen, I'm going to remove the printer lid sensor again, which is just, it's out of sight, but I'll show it to you in a minute, uh, and let the print head come over to the middle. So if you get the ink cartridge missing or damaged or not set, very important this, go back to your system and put the roller in the downwards position. It must be down because you're going to unclip this. Now if you unclip it with the roller in the up position, ink will backtrack all the way to the system. So very important, make sure it's locked all the way down and then you can safely remove this cartridge uh, and basically and, and no ink and it won't backtrack at all, no mess at all so as you can see. So it's giving me an error for the uh, black cartridge. Uh, now it, it, it's not recognised or, or not present so it's always worth checking uh, the chip. Sometimes you can just unclip them and clip them back in uh, and that works and the error message won't, won't come back. Sometimes they're a very fraction, fraction tiny little bit out of line uh, and you can actually move these chips believe it or not. Uh, even though they're stuck down with adhesive they've still got a little bit of play and a little bit of movement so you can actually move them without taking them off. So I've just slightly adjusted that chip pushed it forward a little bit and I've just plugged my cartridge back in now the roller back in the up position again that's quite important remember that one uh, and then what I'm gonna shut the lid and let's see if they're recognized <coughs> so it's still saying yeah so it's saying non HP in cartridge is installed well we know that press OK in cartridge is refilled or depleted, replace OK, yeah we know that, print preparation, so everything is recognised uh, at the moment uh, and the chips are fine. What I will show you now is, uh, just in case you need to do this, I'm sh going to show you the printer lid bypass sensor, so you can see in this area here, uh, there's a little green sticker, so what I've done is I've taken the sticker out of the accessory pack in the, in the box with the SIS system and I've just... Uh, Stuck, there's a little micro switch there. I've placed the sticker over the micro switch and uh, I'm just press it OK, just hang on. Yeah, so I've placed the uh, sticker over the micro switch and the printer thinks that the lid is closed. So you can do that, just uh, stick that over. So the printer's actually finished now. Uh, no, it's not, it's still doing a printer preparation. When that's finished, we'll run a couple of documents off. I always like to run. Uh, one off with the uh, lid open and one off with the lid closed just so you can see uh, what you can what you're going to get but while it's still preparing let's we'll talk about the sister stuff so within your accessory pack you have some air filters that which look like this these should be inserted with the narrow pointed end facing upwards this will allow the system to breathe. So it's quite important with the SIS systems, they must be on the same level as the base of the printer. If they're not, if you raise it in the air, even by an inch or two, gravity will take place uh, and it's possible to enter, enter the entire contents into your printer. So uh, as a big must, you must check that the SIS system is level with the base of the printer. Right, so the uh, it's finished its preparation now. Uh, I don't know if I can get to do uh, any head cleans in this uh, within this option. Yeah, so uh, just bear with me a second. Uh, tools, tools. Okay. Uh, just, uh, 
print quality report, okay, so I've told it just to print the quality report. I don't know if I've got to do a head clean. Sometimes you can get away with uh, installing them without doing a head clean and sometimes you have to do a head clean. Or, or sometimes you can, you know, you end up doing one or two. It depends on, every printer is different. Excuse me. Now that's how it works in the uh, with the lid open, as you can see. Yeah, so everything looks okay, so I haven't got to do any head cleans at all after installing this SIS uh, system. I'm just waiting for it to finish its diagnostic report. So don't worry, this uh, this time delay, it's not part of the SIS system, it's just the uh, the generation of report of these, uh, always takes a minute to come through. Yeah, so, happy with the quality report. So I'm going to do, uh, let's just have a look, I'm going to do a scan now, uh, copy. Uh, copy. Uh, Number of copies, three. Okay, right. So I've, t I've told it to scan my mouse map, which is located underneath the scanner lid. Um, I'm just going to show you a copy with the lid open uh, and then a copy with the lid closed. That's how it runs with the lid open. And with the lid closed, As you can see, it's really easy to fit, quite simple uh, to run and install, uh, and most of all, it's going to save you a lot of money. Got one more copy to do. And that's it, that's how you uh, fit and install and run the continuous sync system from City Ink Express to the HP uh, B110 series. Thank you.